Now today's lesson, we're going to learn all about capacity. Now who knows what capacity is? That's when you um, take something like liquid and measure it into a scale. It's when you weigh something on a jug or it's something like, let's say, um, a mug or a teaspoon. Thanks. Capacity is how much a container can hold. Okay, so for instance, how much water can fit into here? That's what capacity is. Does it have to be water? I brought some products from home to show the children which products can be measured in milliliters and liters and also to show them that it's not always a liquid that is measured in milliliters. It can be a spice. Okay, so these are both measured in milliliters, but this is powder and this is liquid. So it doesn't have to be a liquid, it can be a powder form. The biggest challenge is about teaching children about capacity is that they get a bit confused with the different kinds of measurement. Capacity is measured in, who knows what it's measured in? Milliliters or liters. Okay, it's milliliters. For instance, millimeters and milliliters. How many milliliters do you think is in the cup? I think 500 milliliters. That's a little bit too much. I'm going to take one more guess. Um, who hasn't had a turn? Mm -hmm. Vanessa. I think that it's 400. 400 is also too much. It's 250 oh. milliliters. Estimating is also a more abstract concept instead of just concrete. It gets them to think out of the box a little bit. This is five milliliters. How much is in here? 400 milliliters. That's a bit too much. 40 milliliters. 40. 40 is a little bit too little. It's 100 milliliters. Okay, now why do you think it's important that we know how much the container can hold? For what reason? Don't put too much in your food. If you don't know how much, the container's going to hold. You might put too much flour or too much sugar or too much milk and then your cakes will flop. That's why you need to know how much is in the container. Do you all understand? Doing it practically is an effective way of getting it right because they can actually physically see it. So on your form, you're going to first estimate. So when you're estimating, you're not allowed to work it out. You must just take a quick guess. And then I said they could also guess, because estimation is a big word for them, um, how many 5 milliliter teaspoons would go into a 100 ml jug, and how many 250 ml cups would go into a 500 ml jug, and how many 200 ml jugs would fit into a litre jug. Then you're going to actually measure it afterwards. That's the actual one. Eight, nine, and then they had to do the actual reading afterwards, which was important to see what the difference was between their estimation and the actual reading. This is a good process because it will see how close they are to the actual answer, to see how good they were um, with estimating. And it just helps them to work out sums because it's, they had to do a subtraction sum to get that answer. Five minus five is? Zero. That's the difference. You see. The comparison between the actual measurement and the estimated measurement, they could see the difference and then it would help to get a closer estimation in the future. You're going to take a big white paper like this and there's pamphlets at the back as well. You're going to look through it and then you're going to choose all the products that have got milliliters and liters. I don't want kilograms and grams, it must have an ML for milliliters or L for liters. You're going to cut them out and you're going to make a collage. No, milliliters or liters. It's a lot of fun for the children to cut out pictures. It gave the children an idea of what kind of products would be measured in using milliliters and liters. They love to compare who's got the best products and um, and it helps them to read because they continually read in the products, the prices. Yeah, what does this mean? This is going to be. But I guess it's too big. 
Okay, some of the children got it wrong. The one girl had a picture of a hairdryer, so the other little boy asked her, but why do you have that picture? And so it got her thinking, why do I have it? So they interacted with each other and helped each other along the way. Some of the children were getting confused between millimeters and milliliters, so then I had to recap the difference between measuring length and distance as opposed to measuring capacity and volume. So I had to differentiate the two What's for them. The distance or how long something is. It takes a lot of effort to do a lesson like this because you have to go and physically go and get the pamphlets and the containers and sort it all out. It's very rewarding to see what they've learned at the end. You know, if you really love your job, you will go the extra mile. And then the children will reward you with, with results and, and good marks in their test papers. Um, it's a very good way to teach capacity because the I could see the children were really enjoying themselves and I know if they're enjoying themselves, it's a good result in the end.